Um, themes, theological themes that I picked up. There are so many I could have chosen, and you may have a better one than me. And you will also see little notepads and pens and um, pencils. Feel free if you have an idea or concept that connects one of these phrases to as I'm chatting, um, or if you want to draw a picture, I, I, um, I think that sometimes sitting and listening all day may feel exhausting. So feel free to um, uh, use your brain while I'm talking, because I really want this to be a time and a space for us to be engaged with these ideas. Um, I don't experiences. Maybe some of you are involved in a church or a faith community. Um, maybe some of you have studied religion like me. Um, maybe you um, are just curious and have no background in religion. That's okay. Um, you don't have to. Um, the hope of our time together, for me at least, is that we can think about things like religion, particularly the Christian tradition we'll be talking about today, but I will introduce some ideas from um, at least one documentary that's about um, an Islamic, a Muslim woman who's working on Islamic feminism, whom I love and adore. Um, but I, I want us to, I want this to be a time for us to think together. Um, because I feel like a lot of times when people experience religion, they're having it talked at them. Um, so I really want us to have a conversation together. Um, my name is Christian. These are pictures of me. Um, uh, I am, my name is Christian, like a literal religion, which always is fun. Um, I am ordained as a minister in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. I've been ordained for 10 years. Um, I did my master's degree at Yale. Um, I studied there. I worked for the United Nations. Uh, I worked in resettlement and um, political advocacy in uh, the Near East in Istanbul, Turkey. I studied um, Arabic and Turkish. So I have a, a robust background in religion and doing religion and what it looks like to do religion. I cur currently serve as a campus minister at Kansas State University. Um, at Ecumenical Campus Ministries, so there I'm working with several different denominations or Christian groups, um, but ecumenical also means working with different faith and non-faith backgrounds. So I actually work with folks who um, don't necessarily come from the Christian tradition or who are interested in deconstructing, that means looking at and analyzing how they grew up and thinking about it maybe in new ways. Um, and those are kind of my areas of expertise, so I help the university think about these ideas um, at Kansas State. I'm also a PhD student at KU. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at and studying in uh, social policy, and I'm really interested in how all these different pieces come together. Um, so that's me. Um, the reason I'm here is not just because of those things. I also uh, I work in film, which is something I did not expect um, in my life. I did not study film, um, but I am interested in storytelling, and I'm interested in good storytelling. Um, and I, I'm, I have become um, aware of and involved in storytelling and telling stories about um, communities and people that are pushing back against the systems that we've lived in. Um, and I think that those stories are really important to me because um, of the communities I serve in faith traditions, but also because of the things I study. So um, I really believe in this stuff. I'm not just, uh, I'm kind of not necessarily on the technical side of the film. I'm, a storyteller, I'm involved in community advocacy and work, and I think that those pieces make me kind of a unique um, person to be in film, and I, I, I really have loved getting to be involved in um, these different projects. So the project I talked about last time when I was here was The Pulpit, and we're still working on making this a feature. Um, you may recognize Spike Lee, he's not involved in the project, um, but the man standing next to him, who many of you are quite familiar with, Kevin Lamont, is our executive yes. producer on the project. Um, and that's just been an honor to get to work with such a legend in Kansas. Mm -hmm. um, the man in the middle is one of my dear friends. His name is Tosin. He's the director. And um, he and I went to school together. And that is how I was involved in film. So if you're curious about how people get involved in film, I, sometimes your friends are like, hey, you're good at these things. I want you to work with me on our project. Um, and the man standing next to him is named Chris Commons. You may have also have heard of him. Um, he is working, he works with us and has been really in, uh, instrumental in making sure that we have um, all the right angles and shots with um, his background. So anyway, these are the, this is kind of the core team that um, I've been working with. We have a short film, like I said, called The Pulpit, working on a feature film, um, and that's basically what I spend my time doing with film types of things. Um, this is some of the stuff I care about. Um, and in, in context of ministry, I already shared about myself. A 
a little bit, but um, one of the things that we do a lot of at, in my context is thinking about food insecurity, making sure people have access to um, food, making sure that we are an inclusive community and a place of belonging, and making sure the environment is taken care of. Um, I'm someone who's very passionate about access to human, uh, human rights and human um, having their own ability to have dignity in life, like that's just so important to me. And so um, there's an article on uh, some of the work I did with abortion access in Kansas. And then me as a little kid, because I'm a nerd, and I just look like a nerd school kid, and I love that. So that's, again, a little bit more about me than you wanted to know. Um, with our time today, what I share, for those of you who just are new to the room or who are um, just arriving, I want to spend time thinking theologically and thinking about film and themes in film theologically. Sometimes um, when we talk about these things, as someone who has back, a background in education and ministry, you, you'll, you may feel or feel uncomfortable or notice um, you're hitting places that you're not familiar with in yourselves. Religion can be very personal. So um, if that comes up for you, um, I'm happy to talk about it with you later, or we can talk about it as the group if you feel comfortable doing that. But know that I recognize this, this isn't just something that's like a lofty idea for folks. This can be very personal and based on your own experiences, and I want to honor that and make sure that I, I name that as we talk about these things. Um, so in order to think about film and religion, you really cannot, for me at least, maybe from my lens, maybe not from yours, but um, I think a lot about religion and entertainment and how um, religion is thought about or depicted in um, entertainment. All of you, I'm sure, have the very specific experiences you've had with film around religion. Um, I picked some, like I said, themes on the table that maybe you've seen in films, maybe you haven't. Um, one of the major um, films, or I want to think together a little bit about ways that I've classified or thought about films or film that has um, religious themes, and maybe you'll notice some things that are different, or maybe you'll notice some things that you want to add to this conversation. Um, but one of the themes I think that we see a lot in film is um, thinking about evangelicalism, right? Um, and fundamentalist Christianity. I think in the United States of America, that is a prominent theme that you that you see and encounter when you are engaging in film. Um, there are so, more films about this than I could put on a slide. <laughs> so I tried again. Like my goal is not for me to talk a lot, but for us to think together. So I picked some that I thought had different kind of concepts to think about. One is Tammy Faye. Mm -hmm. Um, and Tammy Faye is a televangelist, another way that entertainment and um, religion really intersect. Um, televangelism comes on the scene right in the 80s and the rise of television, and we see that people are exposed particularly to ideas around Christian evangelicalism in the United States. I keep saying that because evangelicalism looks different in different countries, which may shock people. But um, as a back, with a background in religious studies, like that's something that we see. So I'm really talking about film in the United States and the messages of an entertainment that come out of that. Um, and we see in this particular um, moment in this film um, about some of the things that she struggled with in terms of evangelicalism um, and the way that the industry, um, televangelism particularly, did not <laughs> suit her, do well to her. Um, and I think a lot of people, when we think about, um, in the film, for example, that I'm working on the pulpit, engages with some of those themes of how church, um, how religion, can, act, can really um, harm and cause a lot of harm. And so I want to name that that's a part of something. And even though Tammy Faye was the face of um, televangelism, she also really struggled with um, all sorts of things because of the world that she was in. Jesus Camp is another is a documentary, not as much narrative-based, um, but looking at um, sort of the storytelling of, again, the, I would say more fundamentalist Christianity. It doesn't matter if you, in, in this context of this conversation, I'm not trying to, um, it parse apart the difference between evangelical and fundamentalist Christianity. We can do that if you're interested in that. Um, but th this is another storytelling mechanism to let people see sort of what this concept of being born again. I have the word salvation on the table, um, but what that concept looks like and what that looks like, particularly in me, at least when I think of this film, I think of the children that are so engaged in this community. Um, and uh, so that's, a, I think, a film, when, when I think about what evangelicalism or fundamentalism, how it's depicted in film, another storytelling line. Um, and the Da Vinci Code, which may not, um, you know, I, I picked this one because it it really, the, the I would say the bad guy, right, in this film is um, Opus Dei, so a part, a smaller part of the Catholic Church. Um, ends up being, if you haven't seen it, I apologize for spoilers, but um, 
you know, they're utilizing things like self-flagellation. There's a lot of um, uh, this idea of purity, right? That you have to be pure in order to engage um, in the church uh, church life, and they end up being the bad guys of this film. So um, they are not involved in the evangelical or, pro or um, fundamentalist communities. Those are from the Protestant traditions, but they are involved in some of the same theological backgrounds. Um, and again, like if you want to talk more about the religious parts, I'm a huge religion nerd. That is my expertise. So I'm always happy to do that with you. Um, another way that I think we see religion in depicted in film is by being against religion, right? So we have um, uh, we have these ideas from Marx, for example, that religion is an opiate of the masses. Mm -hmm. This idea from Nietzsche that um, that God is dead. And so there are films that come out of this. And I think some of them are reactions against sort of the dominant narratives and evangelical, fundamentalist, um, and conservative, in this case, maybe, um, Catholicism. I don't mean that in a political way. I mean that in a theological way. I know that sounds maybe confusing, but when I say uh, conservative Catholicism, I mean things like high liturgical practices. So um, they're going to have very ritualized ways of being. When we think about that in a religious study sense, conservative doesn't mean the same thing that it does in American politics. It has a different meaning. It means how a worship service is done, how a community engages with one another. So when I say that, I mean it that way. Um, and I also want to name and recognize that um, uh, that some of us in this room or on the live stream may have come from um, and been raised or part of still the evangelical or um, fundamentals communities, and I, I think that we can have conversations about that too. So I just want to name these are ways that things are happening in film um, that as I've seen it, and I'm happy to hear other thoughts. So back to this uh, movement, I, I would say against or in opposition to religion based on some of these concepts, um, religious uh, dogma. Dogma, I think, is an interesting title in, in the fact that, um, you know, dogmatics um, is, a, is a way that a lot of um, people see or experience religion, particularly in Christianity and film, it has a black and white sense of being. Um, it is this or, or, or that. And in, in theological speak or religious speak, that's dogmatic or dogma. So I think it's the, this film like is playing with the ways that um, there's a very simple narrative in some faith communities and in um, entertainment and religion that says, you know, this is, there's only one way to be. So playing with that thing. The Golden Compass, I think, is another way that literature, um, the, the writer or thinker of The Golden Compass was an atheist, wanting to write children's literature from that perspective. Um, and this was a, a book that was made into a film and has had a lot of traction, not only in atheist communities, but also, I think, I mean, I, I read it. I didn't know that growing up, and I would have still read it if I knew it growing up, because that's the kind of family I was raised in. But, um, a really interesting way to depict and think about how how religion or religious themes are depicted and thought about in film. And the last, mm -hmm. and this is the one that I would describe our film as kind of fitting into, um, the film that I'm working on, the films that I've worked on, um, are uh, fits into the social justice, or I'm going to use the word heretical, but I don't mean heretical like you like might have engaged it. Um, the concept of heresy in the context of Christianity means not orthodox. So um, orthodox practices are things that are found in things like creeds. So you may have heard, uh, if you ever recited a creed that said, Jesus is the son of God, our one and only son, uh, born to Mary, a virgin birth, these kinds of things. Maybe you've heard of the Nicene Creed. Um, those are the orthodox traditions of Christianity. They have been around, um, some of them more recent than you may think than others. <laughs> Um, but they were argued and fought over and killed over to create this thing that was considered orthodox um, or the ways that the Christian churches have taught um, how to engage with the Bible. Heresies are the things that lost, are the ideas or the theological concepts that didn't win, <laughs> which sounds silly. You might think, I didn't know that that's how this worked. Uh, and maybe if you come from a biblical literalist background, you've been taught, and which is um, again, I'm not meaning to say you were taught in a bad way. I'm just I'm engaging with this idea as a religious scholar, not just a, a, a person in the community. Um, but the history of Christianity and its ideas have changed over time. Uh, and we can look at historical documentations and these types of things. So the heresies 
that come out of these conversations would be um, something like universalism, which is where Come Sunday kind of has the crux of its argument. Um, universalism is an idea that um, everyone goes to heaven. And it is a part of the Christian tradition, and there are lots of arguments about it still, and there's actually communities that believe this still today, that um, there is no hell, and that you that everyone um, has access to heaven in some way. A lot of folks um, find that really scary or heretical, right? That's where this, the heresies come from. Um, other folks find that really comforting. So I'm not saying we need to fall on that, but um, there are uh, films that are made that are dealing with some of these heresies of the church um, that are alive and well still in today's um, society. I also want to say heresy doesn't mean it's bad. <laughs> I'm using it as a historical term. Um, I uh, am someone personally who is very comfortable, again, like talking about religious theologies and backgrounds, not as a this is right and this is wrong, but as a how has this historically developed? Um, there are actually, um, there's actually scholarship on religious ideologies that are not necessarily always taught in film, although in this case I am saying that, um, that have developed over time, and I think they're interesting to talk about. So I'm going to talk about them more fluidly than maybe you have heard another minister talk about, and that's okay. Um, another film that is really that fits really neatly and uh, cleanly into social justice uh, making is Selma, or films that center on Martin Luther King, his life, his legacy. Um, he has been um, seminal, again, in the United States context, of her promoting theological concepts like justice, theological concepts like charity, theological concepts like centering black experience and saying that God is uniquely and wholly in involved and enmeshed in the black community and black church expression, and that we have to take that seriously. Um, and furthermore, that black people and black communities deserve to be um, fully participate in society in ways that they have not always been welcomed. And so I think many of us are, can think of ways and films um, that uh, Martin Luther King is depicted in, and that falls very squarely in this social justice realm um, of filmmaking. I again said I, I have been wanted to focus on um, uh, Christian traditions, but I love this documentary, and I think other people should watch it <laughs> because it will expose you to another theological tradition in Islam that you may not have been familiar with. But the no noble struggle of Amina Wadud. Um, Amina Wadud is a an imam who is uh, an imam is the title of like what a, a minister or priest would be, and she is very involved in interpreting the Quran and interpreting um, faith faith documents from the Islamic perspective. Um, from a feminist lens, and this has meant that she is basically on, on many political um, lists for doing that, particularly of governments like Saudi Arabia, who are very uncomfortable with women leading um, leading communities. Uh, again, I want to in insist or say that there are, um, what we're talking about, or what I've been talking about, has focused on the United States. She's located in the United States, but this concept of heresy and social justice is not just does not just belong to Christian filmmaking, um, or films that focus on Christian themes. Also, has a lot of a robust history in other communities, and she's a great example of a woman who's extremely involved in having conversations around interrogating films um, or interrogating concepts or notions or theologies that um, don't always serve everyone in their community. And she's great; you should watch it. Okay, that's my plug for today. Um, I uh, had the pleasure of getting to meet with the filmmakers this last weekend at a summit on um, religious freedom in Washington, D.C., where we talked about um, the development of what, what is referred to as white Christian nationalism. Um, and so I want to name that that's something that um, I've been involved with and think, um, in my opinion, um, living in Kansas, working in ministry, um, being uh, working in film, working with other filmmakers is an important um, thing, an important lever um, that filmmakers are thinking about um, as they're making new films. So I would like to, at some point, maybe not right now, I want to check in with you all, um, talk about, uh, look, watch maybe a couple of documentaries just for like one or two minutes and unpack some of the theological concepts you see in them. Um, but before we do that, I want to know, I want to hear from you all. Um, I've talked a lot, and I've put a lot of different ideas on the table. 
Um, and I didn't know um, if there was something that you had noticed or um, that you wanted to talk about or share or see what was going on just with, with what I had shared so far. And it's okay if there isn't, but um, yeah. What are your thoughts? Oh, I just here last year when yes. you were with your group yes. on the pulpit. That was excellent. Thank so you. I've been kind of looking for that, waiting for that. Yeah. Am I able to ever just type in the pulpit and yeah see something? Okay. Come we on. have yeah we so we have a short yeah. um, a short film that's available that you can watch. If you go to the pulpitfilm.com, that's mm -hmm. our landing page. You can also follow us on social media. Um, and I'm happy to talk more about okay. if you want to get yeah. more into the details of. Yeah. The adventure that it has been making a film that falls more into the social justice lens. Um, I've learned a lot trying to do this. I would say, you know, that films that are currently being funded um, or have resources fall more into this camp or category. Um, and those that fall into this category um, are much harder to get funded. And if, if you really think about, you know, um, you asked a great question. If you really think about the films that you've you maybe have seen or thought about, they really do. This is where the money is, right? Like mm -hmm. making films in this space, either critiquing or in favor of. Like there's an audience for that, and I think their audience is also for these other film categories. Um, and I don't want to say there aren't, but it is different to make a film that's critiquing institutions um, and and bringing up some of these other theological themes. Um, because they're just they're not done as much like thinking about this has not been as, as prominent in our entertainment and so what we're finding is that um, people love the film but they're like we don't we're like nervous or we're trying to figure out how you fit into this conversation and that's that's been interesting for, for me to figure out but we are still we're still doing that i presented like i said we were in dc and we're talking about this with other filmmakers so it's still going it's still happening um but we're we're trying to figure it out yeah, I've just recently I've seen the movie Till and again Hotel Rwanda. Those are social yeah. justice types of things that really powerfully influenced. And I was with people that had never seen either one, so that was really riveting. Yeah. Um, I think I did, every night you could watch a different film about the world mess, so the world situation. Yeah, the world mess is a great place. Yes, yes. Um, I'm really interested in the lady I am, Amina. Wadud. Yes, I mean, Wadud. Yes. So have you met her in person? Are you yeah. kind of in her orbit now, in her world? <laughs> That's a great question. I, I do not. I used to work more in, um, so when I was working with the United Nations, um, I was involved in um, faith-based sort of relationship building. So um, that looked like attending conferences with um, Muslim scholars and having those conversations. She was never at one. I always wanted her to be. But, um, but I'm familiar with her because of my undergrad degree in religious studies and my master's in religion. So, um, so I don't know her personally, but, and I don't run in the same circles, but I do have colleagues that look at her. Um, I think what I, what, how I have engaged with her is through her Quranic interpretations. If you like to read religious scholarship like I do, she literally has re and translated the Quran um, to have um, to focus on feminist language and um, centering women's experiences in the Quran. Um, and and so anyway, I, a really wonderful woman. She teaches. She at least as far as I know, she taught at Star King um, Theological School in California. So she has classes available if you want to learn more about. Um, feminism and the Islamic tradition, but there's a lot of resources, a lot meaning like a couple. <laughs> um, on her, kind of her, um, she referred to it as the noble struggle. Um, and yeah, she's really, really wonderful and fascinating. And it really can't be too, one of the things that's difficult for her, in my opinion, is that if she's too public, she will be killed. I mean, right. she has very active death threats on her life because of what she's doing. Um, so it's she's not like super accessible, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because yeah. um, she's truly like challenging nation states, you know, I mean, yeah. and political systems that say that, that yeah. women cannot do this. And she says, excuse me, I'm going to do this now. So really an incredible, just an incredible leader, which is why I brought her up. I think everybody should yeah. know her better. And a lot of times, again, like when people hear Islam, they don't think of her. Or they don't think of the ways that people are pushing um, non-orthodox uh, ways of meaning. I don't like using non-orthodox and orthodox, but it has a historical lineage, so I'm using it. 
I think her way of being is just as valid as someone who, um, and if, if not more, <laughs> um, based on the ways that we engage in the world today and the, the things that we know, right? Like women are full humans, should be treated as such. And also, right, like the Quran is a document, hasn't necessarily always, it's been interpreted to say that it hasn't said that. Like they have, for example, provisions around women breastfeeding, they get paid to do that. That's not in a biblical text, for example. Um, we have, you know, so there's there's a lot of things that have been interpreted theologically that I don't think are fair. And I think ways that filmmakers can take these ideas and say, like, okay, what are, I'm going to use the word heresy again, even though I don't love it. What are heresies or what are stories that we can tell that center different ideas um, and, and look at the tradition not as a monolith. Religion, right, is not a monolith. Each of us in this room have probably have different experiences with religious communities. Um, and so we know, even in this room, we have the knowledge that things can are a little different. And um, so why do we assume, why do we treat or pretend that things are all one monolith? On the, also, so that's true. On the other hand, when things like politics and religion become enmeshed, um, uh, in ways that are um, meant to create propaganda for the state. Um, we see things like Christian nationalism becoming people's understanding of Christianity. That is, a, that is an intentional coupling of ideas, mm -hmm. right? Religion functions oftentimes as a vehicle for ideas. There's a lot of scholars that would say that, both for and against religious institutions and the state. Like there's, there can be um, meaning, in this case, I'm going to say the Republican Party, I mean, constituencies that are really interested in um, utilizing religious tropes and ideas and ideologies and images to tell a particular story. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, but that is what that, that particular thing looks like. It falls under this, this sticky note of nation building. These are great questions. Any other thoughts? I, again, I'm talking a lot, and I, I want to um, take a couple minutes to um, think in other ways, but I also want to make sure that if you have questions or if I've said something that like doesn't make sense or you would like to hear more about something else, that I make sure we have time for that. I have time for that. Has, any, is, has something particularly piqued anyone's interest that we could talk? I could talk about more that we could spend some time on? Do you have a collection of DVDs of everything from like Moses, all the old historical kind of religious, mm. spiritual movies? I mean, or you personally? I, mean, I don't. No, I do not. I um, can just see you having a. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet. Um, I, I really actually also um, enjoy reading a lot too. And so I think that like um, I enjoy like watching these films and then what we'll do together, thinking like about what are some of the theological themes that are trying to be. Um, that are that are seen as important, that are seen as marketable. <laughs> um, and what are some ways that uh, people maybe are resisting um, um, the current political institutions? You know, there's a lot of. I, I really enjoy that part of the films, and I watch them on streaming. But I love. But I love. Yeah, I love. So like on the C.S. Lewis, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, are, that's great. Yeah. Sorry, I'm more traditional, I guess. Or it's okay. it's <laughs> back in the day. It's okay to be traditional. It's okay to be traditional. Yeah, the preacher's wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, well, with that, I'll, let's um, let's turn our attention to the stuff on the table. Um, so I named several films. I think you probably have several films in your mind. You feel free to participate if you want and jump off, jump into one of the tables. Um, what are I have some concepts on the on the table um, that I thought would be interesting to. Um, dissect together or think about together and think about maybe where you've seen in films or maybe there's some other concepts that you um, have seen in films that you would like to think about together and what is the thing one of the assets you have with me is that I have a background both in theology um, and I think that um, if as folks who are engaged or interested in making film or thinking about film diving into some of the ideas behind film is really important too, right? Like those are the things that are going to motivate how you write a character. 
Those are things that are going to motivate how you tell a story, how you tell uh, how something unfolds, what the ending looks like, right? For example, if you have a perspective on, on religion that it's bad, the ending is going to look different than if you have a perspective on, I'm sorry for the live streamers, I'm moving around. Um, you're going to have a different perspective on religion or on the ending of the story uh, if, than if you see that there's like an, an arc, right, like Martin Luther King talked about. Um, so those are those I, these ideas are going to help shape how you how you tell your stories. So I thought, why not spend some time thinking about some of these ideas? Maybe talking about ways that they have been told, um, ways that they haven't been told, um, so that we can think about how you could apply this if you were to create your own script or to write your own book or to um, write things like that. So with that. Some of the ideas I have on the table, and I have sticky notes. Maybe you don't want sticky notes. Maybe you just want to take notes on your notepad. I do not care. Um, so one of the concepts I have is dominion. Um, and like I said, I'll name, how about this? I'll name an idea, and then I'll give you a couple minutes to write your thoughts down. And then I'd love for us to get together and, um, and see what you came up with so we can have a conversation based on what your experiences are. Um, so. Feel free, like I said, to grab a sticky note, use your notepad. You can put them on the table if you want it to be more visual. Either way is fine with me. Um, I'm going to name things for the folks online so they can also do this activity with us. Um, one of the words I have on the table is afterlife. I feel like that's a theme you see a lot in film. Um, there's a lot that religious systems say about afterlife. Um, maybe uniquely, right? Like a lot of other places talk about afterlife. Um, concepts of dominion. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that means like uh, dominion is what is in Genesis. Um, yeah, we see um, passages that talk about like we, the human beings have dominion over um, other creatures, that they're naming other creatures. Um, and that's kind of where this concept of dominion comes from. Um, I talked about um, Christian nationalism, nation building. There's a lot, particularly in the Old Testament, on nation. Um, and anyway, I, won't get, I don't want to nerd out. That might be a word that is interesting for folks to unpack a little bit. Um, charity is another word that um, uh, charity, mercy, justice, those are other concepts that have a very particular um, theological lens and way of being. Um, I used the word, I thought sacrifice. I feel like a lot of films I see concepts around sacrifice, around um, kind of having to make choices. I thought that might be an interesting concept we could think about. So just take a couple of minutes. Oh, love. Oh, that was a good one. I didn't see that one. You should pick the love is another great, another great um, theological concept or ways I think we've seen in some of these films that I've shared and the films that you may have seen. Love has a very robust history in Christian and traditions. So if you want to pick one word, maybe two, um, unpack uh, or write down some of the things that come to your head just quickly. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be anything um, really in depth um, or it can be. And then we'll, we'll see what you come up with. So I'll we'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Are the directions clear? Great. Phenomenal. You can do that online too. I haven't spent a lot of time with you. I'm so sorry. But I'm glad that you're here. Another minute or so.
I really, um, as, as someone who's finishing their PhD in education, I really believe that we all bring different wisdom to the room because of our experiences. And so um, I'm excited to hear about your wisdom, your interpretations, the things that you've seen, and um, I really value them. And I'm excited to get to do this with you. Um, what were, were there any, um, what were the words that people chose? Maybe that, that's a good place to start so we can see where there's synergy around stuff. Just show, throw it out there. Mine is love. Oh, oh, love's great. Did anyone else pick love? Great, we have two loves, great. Anyone, other words that folks focused on in their time of writing? Oh, other words. Oh, I, yeah. What'd other other words. Yeah. Which well, I picked three: um, sacrifice, and I linked a movie that was powerful to me. Great. For sacrifice, the movie The Way, Martin I love Sheen, and then Emilio Estevez. It's amazing. Oh, so good. Yeah, he's brilliant. Okay. And um, Afterlife, I picked What Dreams May Come, Robin Williams. Oh, okay. About heaven and hell. Okay. And where an individual who's taken his his or her own life. Or their journey takes them. Okay. And then finally, um, for justice, nation building, um, nation building, um, mercy, uh, Invictus. Okay. Matt, Matt Damon, the story of Nelson Mandela. That's Those awesome. are powerful movies. Invictus, What Dreams May Come, and The Way. Those are great examples. Thank you. I, um, other, other, so we have, we have lots of several words. Any other words that people landed on? What did you all land on? Um, I was on Afterlife. I thought about, I could not think of the name of the movie. Okay. But it's like a movie where, you know, I don't know, it's a boy or a girl has cancer and, you know, ends up, you know, seeing God or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I thought about that. And then I thought about, this isn't on the table, but uh, Revelation as okay. well. Um, and I thought about like all the Tyler Perry movies where oh, yeah. at the end somebody <laughs> always has some type of revelation yeah. from, I don't know, from Medea or okay. from God or they end up going to church. Um, specifically, um, I can do battle by myself. The main character ends up going to church towards the end and life gets better. Okay. Love Those that. are great examples. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like does anyone, I would love to hear what your, you don't have to, you can just name the words you picked if that feels more comfortable. Um, I was thinking about after life a lot, and there's like a lot of different perspectives on that word, just based on like, there's so many films, I couldn't even think of one because there's just so many yeah. that has to do with afterlife, and I don't know. That's a, that, that's a great, that's really helpful. You're absolutely correct. I feel the same way. I would like, this feel like an obvious. Like I see all these words and like, there's, so many films I could probably think of, but it's just so many <laughs> because yeah. people have different perspectives. On yeah, absolutely. I think that it sounds like people have in the room have chosen afterlife, like that's been a, a, a theme. I know we have a love a love connection, maybe like not literally, but like <laughs> spiritually. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And um, a revelation. I use the word also apocalypse. I think about, I, I actually put that on a note card. So I don't know why it's not out here, but it's a great catch. It was a great catch. Um, uh, you had mentioned mercy, nation building. Is there a particular idea that you're like, okay, let's let's talk about that one a little more in depth? I know this is strange that I'm asking you, but you can we can do this together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that feels like let's so um, if, let's look for our time and if push back on me if this doesn't feel helpful. Um, let's afterlife. There were, I feel like there were a lot. I, I like the concept of love. <laughs> it feels light. <laughs> so let's take them out. Did you say what yours was? Well, I, mine is sacrifice and oh, okay. um, and justice. Um, not so much a movie, but I, I read a lot of books, um, and um, I'm just really uh, impressed about how many people have sacrificed so much. I guess so maybe some of the words you, you talked about, talk about people who have pushed back against. Um, you know the uh, the society things that have been uh, uh, you know who've been forced, but people that have, who have pushed back and how much they've sacrificed. Um, one thing, I mean, I've, I've, I've read like Fox's Book of Martyrs, so I know about the early Christian history and you know how people sacrificed their own you know lives. Oh, 
and then of course you know modern times and uh, you know things that have to do with social justice um, and you know one of the things that really impresses me I think a lot especially African Americans they don't really realize how many white people have sacrificed so much to help black people get where they are. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm, talk, I'm talking about in terms of you know freedom, how they fought back against the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, there are a lot of people that really have, you know, how they fought against all the abolitionists, all the, I mean, just right on up, you know. So anyways, um, and a lot of them had uh, religious connections, you know, coming out of the Methodist church, you know, some Baptist people like, uh, Will Campbell, um, tremendous Baptist minister, you know, during the civil rights struggle, uh, Florence Mars, um, Dunbar Ogden Jr. Just, I mean, it's just powerful. Those are powerful stories of sacrifice, which they did not have to do because mm -hmm. they were white. They could have just joined the brotherhood, and but they forgot about the color they were. They were about you know social justice for everybody so anyways not so much a film but these are just some great stories and they just they've always impressed me and so i spent a lot of time in that area i really appreciate you sharing all that um i think a great what i heard you saying at least for me was um how books and other um really um, seminal folks can shape how we think about concepts like sacrifice and justice um, I don't. I actually, when I was writing the card, sacrifice didn't necessarily mean it in a, a positive way. And I think what you've demonstrated to me um, is that a lot of these concepts, sacrifice included, can have. Um, I'm going to use the psychological term, a light and dark side. Not that it, that it's perfect, but that there's um, positive, maybe a negative aspects of what sacrifice can look like. And I think you beautifully illustrated. Uh, how sacrifice and justice can be interrelated and um, tell stories that really not only just uplift the person, but the people who engage with them. So yeah, because yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of African Americans, you know, when they, they when, when they, you know, they just look at the civil rights struggle, I'm going to be quick about it. Uh, yes, but anyways, um, you know, they just hear stories of, about how bad white people treated them. You know, if, you know, if you look at a picture of, say, um, just an example of um, the um, integration of the school in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas Central High School, in Little Rock, Arkansas, and you see this crowd of you know all these white people and these you know this these not like kids trying to get in the school. Well, also in the picture is uh, so that's the big story, but uh, there are also three white ministers in that picture too, and they don't you know most people don't pay any attention to the to the and there's a powerful story in those three white ministers there. You know, Will Campbell and Dunbar Arthur Jr. and another minister. But uh, so, I mean, you just have to look deeper. And, and, and of course, I, I think I mentioned this to my sister once, uh, just last Christmas. I said, you know, I'm really impressed about, uh, and I want to tell the stories about white people who helped us. And she said, I never knew any white people helped us. <laughs> well, I mean, do you know how many people? African Americans don't know how many actually helped us, you know, and so they sacrifice. I mean, they they sacrifice their homes, they sacrifice their businesses, you know. They had they lost friends. A lot of preachers got kicked out of churches, you know. It's just amazing what they have sacrificed so that the world could be a better place. And they weren't just doing it just for us, you know what? They were doing it for white people too. So white people could become better. Mm -hmm. So the whole world could become a better place. So anyways. Now I think again, like you're you're really t thinking about how a, a normal narrative is what I hear you saying, and fine. Um, when you look closer or look at a different segment of the story, you really can see a different view, and that really matters to you. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's an excellent example. Thank you. I applaud you for reading. I, you know how many people don't have books in their homes or really don't read other than a magazine or something? I'm like, no books. You're not at the library. We just talked to someone and I'm like, no. I'm like, oh. Yeah. 
So keep reading. <laughs> yeah. I also want to make sure that the other, I, I, I should have said the love connection, it's not there. But if you wanted to say anything <laughs> about what you had. Uh, no, I, and I was trying to think of uh, related movies um, for this. It's a little easier to think of uh, maybe afterlife movies. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, and just to throw out um, ones that don't um, you know, appear immediately to um, be religiously based in, in any particular way, I would just um, uh, mention um, uh, The Sixth Sense and oh, okay. um, yeah. That's um, an interesting choice. And Arrival, um, the, the sci-fi film, are very interesting takes on um, kind of uh, okay. eternal life mm -hmm. um, uh, of a sort. Um, anyway, um, but no, I was I was just uh, then thinking again about um, uh, love and justice to, together, and I, um, you know the way they're um, talked about um, in my biblical tradition, they're they're hardly separable. Um, that you know, uh, love is not affection. Love is seeing to um, the other's good as you envision it for yourself. You know. Uh, love of neighbor uh, yes. as self kind of thing. Mm. Um, anyway, and so, yeah, there, I mean, there are all kinds of uh, depictions of that in um, movies as well. Um, but uh, aside from, um, you know, the, the social justice films that you've been mentioning, sort of are in my mind now and blocking out yeah. <laughs> access to yeah. others. Um, I'm so glad that that's the case. Wow. <laughs> Those are, that's a great, I really also really appreciated how you have, all of you done this, like put, this, put concepts together, I, I really, that's great. <laughs> Making it your own, um, Love of Neighbor is a great, another really um, mm -hmm. important example. And something else that I heard you do that I that I had not thought of, but I but others have done in the room as well, is talking about, not, I'm not, I would say not, I think most things have some theological arc because I am me, <laughs> but like utilizing films that science fiction, for example, that, that aren't necessarily like about heaven or hell, but have afterlife themes in them, right? So many films engage with, I'm going to use the word theological, maybe another word is better, these themes that don't just, they come from faith backgrounds, you know, faith traditions, and are utilized across different, different medium, right? So um, developing a lens or um, have, uh, seeing the world in this way, which is the way I, <laughs> I see it, or that you're all seeing it too, um, it, it also like, it's not just in one kind of isolated place, right? It, it permeates conversations. And so I really appreciated hearing the films that may not be fall into the like religion and film category, but have really clear, mm -hmm. based on our conversation, religious or theological themes for you. Um, or religious through lines that uh, maybe other people don't see. So we're developing, you know, a lens of like seeing and understanding films from this perspective that um, can that works in a lot of ways that you, that wouldn't work. Um, that it, doing this kind of having this conversation, um, this uh, contributes something meaningful. So I'm excited. I get excited. Um, I had love. I had love. As tell well. me, yes, tell me. And so the reason why I worked on love because of the significance of we need more movies to show or maybe of uh, just conversations not so much movies but conversations so we'll know that there's different layers to love and so when i wrote down love i was thinking of the perspective of okay when i'm viewing television there's a love in uh, tyler perry's movies mm -hmm. and the theme and the different types of love is at different levels throughout the movie but then you can relate all of you can relate to the preacher's wife and there was love there as well and so we can have dialogue and understand that there's love on different levels mm -hmm. and on different understandings just like for me i evolved from a very traditional pentecostal background as a young woman and college opened me up to other worlds and so where did I go to? That's the Methodist tradition now with the understanding of love at another level. So I think we need more movies that allow us 
love of uh, different perspectives on, on different levels or different perspectives because Christ's love is endless. So there should be more variations of love like Christ uh, displayed to us. Mm. I really loved this concept of layers of love or different understandings. I love that nuance. And see, I, I think of it like a prism. Like if you rotate the prism, you see different images or glimmers. And I feel like your example was really helpful in that. I think you're right. Like it's love is a powerful theme. And um, a lot of films and music have a focus on that theme. Um, so I think your point was a really is a really well taken one. Um, I just love taking notes for people uh -huh. having wonderful Good. things to yeah. say. Did I, we're, we're circling back to folks, I think, a second time. So did you have anything that you wanted to add based on what you were saying or things that you've heard maybe that came up for you in our conversation so far? You're probably like, I only came today to listen. <laughs> no, this is good. I'm curious about your documentaries that you're wanting to present real quick, like a minute each. What are the names oh, of those? Want to do those? Oh, well, that's a great idea. Let's do it. Thank you for that segue. Oh, <laughs> oh, did you have anything you wanted to say? Great. Um, <laughs> let's bring them up. Um, so my, going to do that. so my hope. With, can, let's see if we can hear. I don't even know. My hope with these, we've talked maybe a little bit about some of our own personal experiences. Is I'm, I'm presenting um, a couple of documentaries. I would say, um, because of my film background and film connections, they're probably going to be more on the um, in, uh, not interrogation. I'm not coming up with all the words I want to today, um, but being critical and pushing back against um, some theological concepts that are and ideas mm -hmm. that have um, traction that are going to be harmful. I would say that that's. Mm -hmm. Those are the communities that uh, of filmmakers that I'm connected to. Um, so if this feels uncomfortable or you're like, I don't think I can do this today, totally get it. <laughs> Every day is not a fun day to talk about. Right. But um, but I uh, so this like I said, this is this film. I just met with their team, had lots of really important conversations. They're interested in our film, and um, it's called Bad Faith. And so what I would invite you to do as we're developing or thinking about this. Um, religious lens or theological lens or that, that whatever you're wanting to call it uh, i'd love to see what you see when you watch this so it's a couple of minutes i'd love to hear what when we're done with this what comes out for you what are the themes that you're noticing do they relate to in on the table have you heard them echoed in um what we've talked about um maybe not let's see if the sound works <laughs> okay. Drat. Uh, one moment please See if I can figure this out. And if I can't, we're going to watch it on my top my computer. I'm so sorry. Technology is like I know that I look like I might be good at it, but it's not my thing. Video sources. I don't know how to do that. Let's try. Let's see. Where we're watching. That's fine. Yes. The speakers here. Let me see if it's connect. Which speaker it's connected to. Always so like having people watch you do this. I know mm -hmm. you are fast and good. Uh -huh. I love you this you're too generous. Epson PJ, is that what that is? That's must an Epson. Okay, it must be that. So the sound sh is connected to that. Point, point at the, uh, the speaker there. That was the volume percentage, is it? Is it? Volume percentage here. At your little speaker up on the left. Is it? It seems like yeah, it's, it's all the way up. Huh? All the way up. It's all yeah. the way up. Huh, well, it should be coming out. Should be, yeah. How crazy is that? Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get close. <laughs> Try and watch it from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to unplug this from there. And if this is too long, then I will just send it to you and you can watch it on your phone. <laughs> Ha ha, okay. Is this okay? Do you feel comfortable doing this? I know this is not ideal. Sorry, um, Can folks see this? If not, let's close our, let's close our, um, I am so sorry that you can't see this. Um, um, Bad Faith documentary, it's on YouTube. Um, you, it's not, there's a lot of things called bad faith, <laughs> but go to the documentary. It's a one minute and 32 second video. We're going to watch it now, but we're not trying to leave you out. So you can watch it too. Okay. Ready? Reminder of our activity, we are noticing what are we seeing? Or what are we noticing in this? Um, in this, yeah. everything can be reduced to right and wrong. Make no mistake about it, we are talking about Christianizing America. God has given us, will allow no one. This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's all right. So yeah, this is, we can do this at home as well. This is good. I didn't know about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to try one more time, and then we're going to do something else. You are all so patient and kind. It's all right. I do not know why it hates me. It's so annoying when the internet doesn't work. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're just like, what are we doing here? This is 2024. Okay. We may end up watching on a smaller screen. I have it on here. Okay, we're going to try it on this. Yep, just close it. <laughs> if this doesn't work, it's working against us. Okay, let's make this big. Everything can be reduced to right and wrong. Make no mistake about it. We are talking about Christianizing America. That which God has given us, we will allow no one to take away. The Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. We will make America great again. Christian nationalism uses religion to justify all kinds of evil. Christian nationalism has been a political tool for centuries. It has nothing to do with Christianity. It's about power and politics. The goal is to enshrine Christian identity as the law of the land to reclaim what the United States is going to you can't take over society unless you take over the seven pillars. And they've gone one by one to do it. We want to the world. We are the Christian Taliban. We need to force the people to believe we believe. When government is in the hands of godly men, it is good. But in the hands of all others, it is evil. Mm. Let's just take a couple couple seconds. Write down what you what you noticed. Maybe what you do what you wish you hadn't seen. I don't know um, things that were missing. And then we'll regroup.
I just wanted to make sure folks online could see ah, the top documentary is the one we just watched for that one minute and 32 seconds. I'm going to bring these up so I'm not so lost on a live stream. Is that better? You can kind of see me. I look a little ominous, although that feels fitting for this particular film. <laughs> um, what did you notice? It's so glad that you joined us. We were talking about... Um, um, religion and film, and one of the things I've asked for folks to do, um, we had a great conversation around um, ideas about films uh, with using these concepts that maybe people have seen and what their experiences were. Now we're watching a short um, intro for a documentary that uh, of a team I just worked with, uh, got to meet and hang out with, and um, talking about some of the theological concepts or, or ways that religion is portrayed in this film. That's maybe another way to look at it. Um, so. Go. What do we got? What did you notice? What what seems salient? What story is this documentary trying to tell? What stories, maybe? One that seems to me is trying to tell the story of the rise of, of KKK again. Mm. Um, and um, it's um, kind of a you know a sneaky way for. Um, white nationalists, you know, dressed up, to me, it's like a pig with lipstick on, you mm. know? Mm. Um, and it's, um, you know, because it, I see a, um, a violation of the First Amendment, the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, that uh, Congress shall establish no religion, because I, I know Congress is not establishing a religion, but the people in Congress who are trying to force their religion on the whole United States without passing a law, I mean, it's effectively the same thing. Mm. So I see that also. Yeah, that's really helpful. So I, um, I use the word ominous, but I hear you sort of alluding to that, that there's an underhanded. Well, you also referenced the KKK, that there was a historical, is that underhanded? Oh, great. Super. Um, that there's a historical lineage. Like yeah, this isn't great. just a new thing, right. that this has been around. Right. Yeah, because that. that's what they, that's, that's, that's who they, Presented themselves to be as a uh, you know Christian in one of the white Christian nations. That's that's what the KKK mm. was. Mm. I mean, uh, so anyway, it's, it's this is the same thing. And I think what you bring up um, is again like in this particular way. I would say net religion is kind of a negative in this sense. Not necessarily that it's inherently negative, but that there are ways that one can connect. Um, identities, religious identities, religious themes to um, a concept and it disseminates. Um, in sociology, which may or may not be interesting to you, there's a lot of people that study and think about how religion functions in society. And we talked about Marx, we talked about Nietzsche, um, but if you were to looking at it as a neutral, if religion or religious communities as a neutral, um, not necessarily good or bad, just that they exist, there are some times when when communities like the KKK rely on religious themes, I would say they rely a lot on concepts like dominion. They own, they own that white people are entitled to this land, and they connect that to biblical concepts, and they say, um, we have a, a birthright, right? Um, and they utilize that language to justify their political ends. Mm -hmm. 
um, nation building, right? They, they're thinking about the nation. Um, if, you, if you actually know much about the concept of nation in the Old Testament, I shouldn't use that really. Old and new are kind of um, tend to not be very kind to the Jewish community. So I'm going to use the word Hebrew Bible because it's their Bible. Um, and it's, you know, Christian Bible too. Um, but in the Hebrew Bible, the concept of nation is not is based on people, not land. So, um, uh, so the, the nation of Israel was not a land-based place. It was a community of people. And so, um, when you connect, one of the ways that um, Christian nationalism, as you and the Ku Klux Klan have mechanized the concept of nation building is by reclaiming this biblical concept, reclaiming in a bad way, <laughs> and saying that nation is tied to land, and that um, when you um, own that land, your God, God reigns over that land. Those are not those are not the intentions or the writings of the Hebrew Bible, and so they're like that's a uh, a way that they're utilizing a theological concept that doesn't actually match with a lot of what's going on. Um, and I think that's a really I don't know nation is a word we hear today and we think about what happened after World War II when we're building nation states. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's a new concept. Um, that was not how nation was used forever and ever. Um, so there's a difference between nation being tied to people and nation being tied to land. Mm -hmm. And this way, in this way, um, Christian nationalism is using that in a way to say other people don't belong. What is another concept, folks, that notice or you're like, this was really clear to me? <laughs> well, one one speaker talked about forcing belief mm -hmm. on everyone, mm -hmm. and that of course is yeah. <laughs> essentially bad faith. That, that is not faith. Mm -hmm. um, and and so. Uh, and then taking over the seven pillars of society. Um, uh, and we can see how it works in the educational yeah. pillar um, as well, where, you know, um, that scientific, um, uh, uh, what, evolution cannot be a part of state testing um, here in Kansas. Um, it, anyway, that's just one example of, of how, um, uh, conservative evangelical Christianity has shaped um, the, the state curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, as it were. Um, anyway, and then taking over those, and that means uh, disenfranchising mm -hmm. the people um, who uh, do not think the same way. So if these people take over and take dominion, then, then people of any other view are disenfranchised. Uh, the the um, uh, war on democracy, in effect. Yeah, I don't know what to add to that because that was very concise. <laughs> but I think what you said is yeah. very salient, and you can like, really helpfully connect to how religious ideas can fuel that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Has this been released for a larger? They've had a small, they had a small release in D.C. and in um, New York. And I, I think that they're trying to have a theater release. I don't know um, more than that, but it is worth watching if you can get your hands on it. Um, and one of the, um, I don't know if, familiar, if you were familiar with Reverend Barber, I bring up a picture of him. He was the voice that was like, this is in Christianity. Uh, if you're interested in resources, I love resources. He run, he essentially has picked up the Poor People's Campaign, which was um, when Martin Luther King was killed. Um, and he now runs, he was a, a preacher. He's a pretty prolific. He's in the same denomination I am, so I mm -hmm. like know him and think he's amazing. William um, Barber. Okay. William Barber is his name. And um, wow. he now is runs an institute at Yale, um, but is very involved in running the Poor People's Campaign. So if you see that, that they visit T Topeka, the Poor People's Campaign will be here. And he has spoken in Topeka at least wow. twice. Oh, wow. Um, but he's a big, uh, he's very much involved in, talking about Martin Luther King's I, um, uh, Poor People's Campaign and saying, like, we, we really need to continue this um, work. And that has been what he has done with his ministry. So um, if you're looking at someone who's very actively speaking out and establishing institutions <laughs> that speak out against this, uh, he cre he's, he's in almost every documentary I've seen um, doing this work um, and seeing it as very prominent. So 
is a great voice. If you're mm -hmm. like, I would love to hear someone talk about this. Um, that's great. That's, that's a good question. I do not know where the documentary is available, but it would be, I feel like it could be really good to watch here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm meeting at the library. Yeah, I may. Yeah, I may suggest that to someone. Wow. Yeah, I just want to add what he's saying. I mean, talking about the love, uh, it's, I mean, what I see when I see that, you know, it's the, uh, you know, God is supposed to be about love. So, but when I see that, that message is the antithesis mm. of because they don't say anything about loving anybody except themselves. Right. They're exclusionary, yeah. where God is inclusionary. Mm. Um, yeah. Or Jesus, you know, is in, inclusionary, and so it's like, it, you know, and then, and then so so as a I'm, I'll just say as a black person, all I see is white people saying that they hate everybody, mm -hmm. including us. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't make me afraid, but you know, it's just it's just it's it's it's, it's that's the reason why a lot of black people. Are, are you know just have this have this image they that they that they themselves create you yeah. know of like uh you know black white people are against us and and so they never see the 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 few white people down at the bottom who are fighting against these other white people what you know those what i was talking about earlier yeah. all you see is just all of that yeah <laughs> yeah I, I think what i hear what to add to what you're saying and what i i agree with um it foments a very particular, yes. this is again where religion and entertainment <laughs> yeah. are intersecting and the ways that the stories that are told about um, religion in this case is that um, white people and black people are on different sides of the justice spectrum and then, yeah. um, or a pyramid perhaps, and that white people are the prominent voice that should be supported and that that is a religious conviction um so and that's horrible i mean that's a horrible horrible way yeah it does and it hijack i think i think they even hijack jesus christ mm. for their own political mm -hmm. ambition they don't care anything about jesus mm -hmm. they really don't mm -hmm. and you know because if they that's not the, that's not jesus's message that they're uh yeah. preaching there is no love by neighbor yeah. message in their message right, mm -hmm. right. there is none you're right that was very stupid. Yeah, I mean, speaking biblically, um, what resonates for me in this regard is that, um, you know, when when asked, and who's my neighbor, uh, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan, right. the person that Jewish people felt entitled right. to spit on and disenfranchise was the paragon right. of love. Yeah. That's, an, that's a great example of utilizing a different right, theological lens to talk about neighbor. Exactly. Um, how about this thing to the table? <laughs> Anything that you guys? I just want to say one thing. At another college in Missouri, um, they had a film festival over the summer. Mm -hmm. So I went a few times. So the first film was La La Land, and you couldn't get a seat. It was just packed. This free film was shown. Mm -hmm. The next week was the film Harriet on Harriet Tubman. Myself, the person who was screening it, and a maintenance person came in for a few minutes and then left. <laughs> that was it. I wow. mean, I think we have to support films that are quality and that get the message out about love and about all these issues. Mm. Um, Again, like La La Land, you know, it was just packed and, you know, they had free prizes and things and yet the movie Harriet, which was a tremendous film right. on Harriet Tubman. And, yeah. So support good films. That tell stories that yeah. we need to, that we need to be told. About. Where is everybody? <laughs> you know, even though we've got the same poster, the same um, marketing, you know, people don't show up. Right. You know, I think that really as a filmmaker that really speaks to sort of the earlier question you asked um I, I would say that currently the industry is struggling to figure out how not just to do marvel and i don't know if they care more to, than just to do marvel films you know and there's some great marvel films like you know yeah. right, not to not to yeah. count, but um i mean it feels to me like yeah. very definitely you know i mean it's kind of important <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, are we so dumbed down now mm -hmm. that you know, all of, we only want to see superheroes and animation. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. world is not Disney. Right. You know, all Disney. 
So I, I think too, you know, again, like one of the things that we're trying to work on with our film, I will show you a trailer before you leave. I did last time, I, but I don't, I haven't met most of you, so you'll get to see. Yeah. Um, is that it, there, you know, it doesn't fit into a normal, it doesn't fit into a box, you know, that makes, that uh, makes money. I don't agree with that, but that's, um, and so I think what the ways that we as consumers um, can think about film is that we have to be, we have to show up for stuff. And I think you make a great point. And I deal with, I struggle with that on a daily basis, you know, trying to get, figure out how to do a film about a story that I think is very important. And that focuses on uh, looking at how people are in relationship with one another and not just at odds with one another. Because I think, you know, one of the things that just is a reality is that entertainment um, in general, like these stories get in people's consciousness, you know what I mean? And they, they do stuff, you know? And so if the only things we're watching um, are a way, it's only a certain kind of love or focusing on hate, <laughs> um, which, you know, our brains are geared to really love this stuff, this bad faith stuff, like really geared to like it. It's, it's um, divisive. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean it's not happening. I'm not trying to say like, I think films like this should be made, but these types of films are we are programmed to really like <laughs> and so we have to practice i think um and also see um the ways that we are connecting even when this is also happening at the same time right like both of those things can be true and it's hard to do that i don't necessarily know how to do that perfectly but um, i do think that that's why when you look at like entertainment and religion in particular you're going to see films that have some more of these like divisive um, stories that need to be told. And while some of the other stories that maybe are about things like different kinds of love or different ways of being in the world um, are told in the same way or don't have the same audience. Right. And also that reminds me of Loving, the film Loving based right. on that case. I think maybe four or five people showed up for that one. That's and they even had like a prize, notebooks to give away and free popcorn. <laughs> Yeah, people are just not. Wow. Well, yeah, it's sad. That yeah. makes me sad. But that, you mm -hmm. said this was in where? St. Joseph, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Well, well yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's in the brain stem. I mean, mm -hmm. the uh, it's in our neurology. I think you're referring to that. Yeah, that, makes sense. You know, um, uh, the old advertising adage, sex cells, well, fear cells, too. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. we're in the age of, of superheroes and, mm -hmm. and political strongmen mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. Because somehow we've been made afraid of mm -hmm. where the world is heading. And so, you know, the ones that, um, you know, make us feel optimistic about, you know, uh, what, how, how we can shape a more just society that's a harder sell mm. um you know because it just doesn't um you know get into our survival instincts thank you for filling that out with much more uh, robust <laughs> scientific knowledge <laughs> than what i said yeah. but yes that makes sense i still want to what you're yeah. you <laughs> tell me what you think um i think for me i think I thought it was interesting that the uh, trailer brought up the whole Roe v. Wade mm. um, case, and I just um, this because that was not that long ago. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very, very recent, and just kind of remembering, you know, how women were discussed at that time, and women who had abortions at that time, the lack of like understanding, empathy, or like um, other options for them in you know having children weren't really presented or given to them and people were brought up well you know you put them in foster care but is foster care even great like yeah, foster yeah. care is a whole different ordeal mm -hmm. um so i just thought that was interesting thank you for saying that it's a really important thing to me and i really appreciated you saying that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a word that popped into my mind was totalitarianism. Am I saying it right? Totalitarianism. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that word popped up a lot just because, um, you know, Trump, they showed lots of Trump, they showed presidents that talked a lot on, um, you know, using 
religion, Christianity as a manipulation for to get people's, um, you know, on their side. Yeah. Which was, yeah. Like the word manipulation is all aptly used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have only like 10 minutes left, but I wanted to make sure we had question time and also whatever we wanted to do. Um, what I hope that you take away from our conversation uh, is that you have a lot of knowledge about these things, which is great. Um, and I also want to say that the ways that we tell stories just to echo what we've been talking about matters a lot. Um, and that there is a consequence to only telling certain kinds of stories um, that has an impact on the world around us. Um, and I think sometimes that can feel sort of vague and like, I don't always know how that works, but I know it because I, I see it in the students I work with. Um, I see it in the communities I serve. And um, I think it's so important, um, at least for me, who works in lots of different worlds to um, center stories that challenge norms around um, exclusion, um, make sure that we're um, thinking critically about um, how we talk about things like um, I, we didn't talk about afterlife, but like how we engage with some of these theological themes that are often taken for granted or believed to be one thing when we, again, in this conversation have seen that there are um, other ways of, of engaging. Um, the, when we do that, that's called higher critical, higher criticism. It's the scientific engagement of um, the historical um, spectrum of religious ideas that have permeated the tradition of Christianity with other traditions. Um, and it is a storied and important way of engaging. We're, are you joining us? Just oh, yay, okay. Um, so I think that it's so, it's so important um, that we spend time doing this together. And I'm so glad that I got to do this with you. Um, any questions, dreams uh, for me? We need about like two minutes at the end. Um, if you want to stay and watch the trailer of the um, short, I would have done, I, we did watch it last time, but I'm also happy to talk about that too. Well, how long does it take to produce a film from uh, from concept to premiere? Now, the reason I'm asking that is because, I mean, you talked about the pulpit, I think, the film that you guys yeah. are doing. How, how long is that? Is it, I mean, I mean, I realized, you know, different films take different lengths. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. And then, yeah. So how long does it take? And, um, you know, like what are some of the steps, you know, getting funding for it and all that type of stuff, getting actors and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So for, um, so there are, I can answer that in two different parts. The first is that um, it often depends on funding, right? Like mm -hmm. most everything in the universe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I think that's kind of the, the um, that's the piece that we're working on for the feature film. Um, and often I think what we're finding is that we're doing multiple things at the same time. So um, we're looking, we're trying to, one of the holes that we're in right now for our feature is that um, people won't give us money until we have a lead name, but the lead won't sign until we have the money. So you have to sort of, you sort of fall into these um, spaces where you're like, this is very difficult. <laughs> and like, we're trying to navigate that particular space right now. Um, and I think, I mean, we, one of the things I love about our team is that we figure it out and it'll be fine, but like, um, I think there isn't really, when you talk, in my experience of talking about film, most films, especially independent films, are made in so many different ways. You know, I mean, um, it's the, the, you, the stories that I hear people doing film, it's almost infinite. Like, um, and so I, for, for us, it's meant that because we've chosen this particular story, um, because we're doing this particular work, like trying to figure out the funding, um, we actually had one of the most successful Kickstarter campaigns. We raised like $150,000. Only 1% 1 of the folks on Kickstarter have ever done that. We actually called Kickstarter and they were like, do not do this. They were like, do not try to have a $150,000 campaign. We're like, we're going to get it. Like, we're going to do it. So we reached like this. They were like, do not do this for a film. Um, so we've had a lot of different kinds of successes that are like pretty amazing. I've never... I had never thought that that would be something I would get to work on, but it is challenging then to, as we're trying to find production companies to work with, um, they really want us to make the bodyguard too. Like that's kind of the thing. <laughs> they're like, we really want the FBI agent and the minister to have a romance. And we're like, uh, that's not the story. You know? like, they're not trying to make 
everybody goes to. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, you know, there, I, you know, I think one of the things that's challenging is that like they're like looking for the way to make the movie the fastest. Often production companies are, and so, but we want to have a lot of integrity in our story. We want to tell. Um, a social justice story that's about communities coming together and leaders working together. And so, um, because that's important to us. I just want to say thank you so much. Oh my gosh. You're doing it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm yeah. running all over the place. Okay, oh, great. This has been awesome. Thank yeah. you. This is excellent. <laughs> um, because we're trying to make sure that the film is not bodyguard too, um, we're looking for partners, you know, that are really in invested in making sure that we're not doing that. So um, that's been hard. You know, not everybody has, this room has a very, like, it seems to be on board. Like, if you're a room with, you know, funders and investors, like, we feel really good about it. But most people are like, we don't, we, you know, we want more sex in the film. You know, the film is not about sex. The film <laughs> is about, you know, like, uh, death threats and, like, uh, communities overcoming. Yeah. Female. To a female pastor. Yes. Um, so, like, yes. you know, like, that's what the film was about. <laughs> um, so anyway, if that may, if that's helpful, one of the ways that our film is what we're trying to do is um, we've had a lot of great success, but we're also looking for people who are interested in our, the same kind of story, um, not just making like kind of a pop religion film, which is great, nothing wrong with that. Um, but like we want to we want to challenge some stuff, so. It's been an adventure, and so we're we're going to find. We have a casting director. We're we're getting things um, unveiled. Our Tosin is actually going to be in a Tyler Perry film, Joy Ridge. Wow. Um, so he's Ooh, so he's from that. Kansas. Mm -hmm. He's the lead in it. So we're trying. He's like we're trying to do is get involved in different types of film to see mm -hmm. like you know who will partner with us. But it's such an adventure, uh, and there isn't a clear path. That's the other part. We're we're trying to figure out our path, and it is that's difficult um, because it's not like this is a film that ever, like has been made this exactly before. It's fun. All right. It's fun. Thank you. Yeah. Can you per premiere it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Your it's, trailer? Yeah, it's been premiered. Well, I'll find out. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Um, before I do that, does anyone any any other thoughts, dreams? Phone calls. Let's stop calling. I'll just show you our trailer. There we go. We just finished our run. Our oh my gosh, this thing isn't working. You're gonna have to watch it on my computer. Um, we just finished our um, independent film run. So we went to like I don't even know how many. We won a Tosin one Best Actor, which was cool. Outstanding Actor. We won Best Short. <laughs> thriller um, a couple times, so that was fun. I think it was just once. I know I'm being filmed, I should remember this better. Um, but um, it's been neat to get to share this. So this is just the um, the short, short version um, of the of the pulpit. And I'm going to, I don't know how to, go to the pulpitfilm.com <laughs> and you can go uh, and, and check it out there. I'm sorry that I'm not able to show it on here, but that doesn't mean that you're not great and that I'm so glad that you're here. So you were looking there, and now you're going to get to look here. Would you close that one again, please, for us? Okay. And you are the female. I'm the associate producer. Okay. And also the lead actress? I am not the lead actress in this. No, no, no. This no. A, okay. I am are just, you acting in it? I am not acting in it. Nope. But uh, wouldn't that be <laughs> full circle? It, yeah, right. <laughs> the internet today. Learn to do right, defend the oppressed, administer 
Justin. Tell us about your hobbies outside of church. What do you do? I volunteer for social justice. All right, missionary. All right. Ephesians 2.10. For you are God's handbook, created to do good work. That's a compelling narrative. Almost bought it. So why am I going to fight if I start digging? You gotta help us help you, lady. I don't know who sent it. You do call the police. Call the messenger. Sure. Call and text the marches. If you keep coming up to the line, someone's gonna send it across. You need to call the police now. Call the police! Sarah, why aren't you telling us? This is bigger than you. You have to choose to give your attention to fight for us. So, what's the plan? The FBI doesn't take sides. Standard protocol. Are you sure about that? Nothing changes. What are you doing with those kids? What are you doing with your sermons? It's wrong. Don't you trust me? I've always trusted you, Lincoln. Then where were you? If you keep preaching what you're preaching, they'll come for you. I have to say something. You can't just say whatever you want up there. Sarah, what happened at the church? Don't drink it. No. Don't eat the dopin. Stop it. I'd like to ask you one more question. What were you preaching? <laughs> it's based on a true story. It is. It's based on a true story. Wow. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Tosin is brilliant. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Who's, who's, yeah. whose story is it based on? You know? Yes. Or you can't tell. Uh, I mean, I can tell you about it. It's based. Oh, it's um, I actually was. Uh, it was something that happened to me. Um, and I uh, got involved with um, the FBI and. Um, I had to figure out how to navigate that, and uh, Tosin asked if he could write the experience into a film. Wow. So, um, wow. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think that the, for me at least, why I'm involved is because I think um, what I learned from being in this scenario and like going through all of that was that um, I wasn't the only person that had had this kind of experience. Um, I did not have a, a gun in my face. We, that was our body, I call it our bodyguard too. Um, you know, they're like, we need sex or violence. And we're like, okay, we'll put a gun in it, I guess. Right. I don't know what else to say, it's wild. Um, but for me, when I started talking to people, I had such an awful experience. I didn't know who to talk to. I mean, this is, a, you know, it was unique to have that happen. And um, people gave me awful, awful advice, said horrible things to me. Um, blame, said that I caused it for myself. I should be blamed for that. Um, that I, you know, who was I, who, who did I think I was um, to think that like I, I deserved to, to like have that? I was like, I didn't, what? what? <laughs> like, um, you know, people said I was making it up or whatever, you know, but mostly folks were um, just like, didn't know what to do with me, like, and felt like I was, I felt like I was a pariah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started talking to folks, like, did this happen? Like, do you, do you get hate let mail? Like, what do you do with this? And it's a story, like, what we're trying to do and what I feel really passionately about, because if it was about me, I wouldn't do it, because it's too weird. Like, it's too close to home. <laughs> um, but I think that it's a story for people who don't know what to do when they're trying to do the right thing, and they're faced with, not knowing who to turn to or who to get help with from um, that for me that's important I want other people to see people to see that this is something that um, happens and that they're not alone I think for Tosin you know I don't want to speak for him but I will um, he's really wanting to tell a story that's challenging sort of institutions and norms um, and that's important to him um, so I think that like that's a that's kind of how I stayed involved is I have a lot of colleagues and friends. You open the newspaper, you hear about um, things happening in congregations, people being killed for worshiping. And 
that's wrong. Um, and it, what do you do with that? You know. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Wow. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, take you back to the book. I'm reading a book right now about um, a priest. It was a part of that 1939 time, and he was in Poland and, okay. and went into Russia, and they, they imprisoned.